Jim Duke Radio. Well, we are opposed around the world. Information beyond the mainstream. Conspiracy. It is a big idea. A new world order. A rational voice in a world of conspiracy. Opposed to secret societies. The secret oaths. This is the Jim Duke Perspective. My special guest today will be Laura Maxwell. She's an ex-spiritist, has studied psychology, and has discernment when it comes to the paranormal and new age. She's going to speak to us about ghosts, sleep paralysis, and other things in a phenomena called spectrophilia. Well, first, uh, let me introduce you to my website, jimdukeperspective.com, and that's where you can find information and uh, the podcast archives and such. And this is information beyond the mainstream, um, likely your Sunday morning sermon as well. I don't see your pastor speaking on some of these subjects, but <laughs> you never know. Uh, but you can go to my website, jimdukeperspective.com, and that's where you can connect with me and also find uh, ways to listen to the podcasts any way you prefer. We're on all the podcatchers and such. And uh, you can listen to us from the main site or from our host uh, podcast, uh, host site, Spreaker.com. Just search for the show there, Jim Duke Perspective. And my channel on YouTube is Jim Duke Perspective as well. Subscribe to it and get notice, notices when new shows are posted and a new video is available. And if you could, give these shows a rating and a like because it helps in the algorithms and uh, such because they're trying to stifle shows like this. But uh, anyway, let's bring on the guest. Today, it's our pleasure to have with us, all the way from Scotland, Laura Maxwell. She's right here. Laura, how you doing? Hey, Jim. Good to be on your show again. That's great. And you, uh, you had a topic that you're studying that you're um, uh, giving a message about. Why are you doing this uh, this topic? Basically because it um, has been given far more media exposure than it has um, for quite a while and um, it's plus on websites and it's really increasing in frequency and I just want to really warn folks and if anyone is involved in this um, emphasize to them how they can actually get free from it. So that that means that if you are needing to get free from it, it sounds like it's an entrapment to begin with. Something that people get mm-hmm. entrapped in, isn't it? Uh, yeah, basically because there, there's um, the media, of course, will will tend to portray um, the so-called nice aspects of it. But um, as we know, um, and people in the deliverance ministry or exorcists know, that um, it doesn't always end so well and that that really these entities can turn really very nasty and even attack people and they can end up, well, sometimes they can end up suicidal because of it. Um, My own mother committed suicide because of these things. And, um, yeah, sex with ghosts and aliens... I guess, could be the title, and um, it's spectrophilia. It is a a growing trend today, especially with celebrities um, who advocate it and so on. So you had first experience uh, knowledge of this. That's why it's important that you bring it forth to tell us, as you mentioned your mother. Yeah. And in several podcasts that you've done Mm -hmm. with me, you've given your backstory about that. So if they want to hear that, they can certainly Mm -hmm. listen in and uh, maybe I'll put the links on on this uh, later. Uh, But this was stirred mostly recently from you when you saw uh, mainstream coverage, at least in in the UK, promoting a a medium uh, on, on national TV, a woman talking about her sex with alleged ghosts, right? Yeah, definitely. And and I should say, you know, my, my, my mother, she was raped by so-called spirits. She was a medium. I had some nasty encounters with them too. Sexual assault, not outright rape. Um, on my own radio show, I've interviewed people who've experienced this or, you know, even experienced it with so-called aliens. Um, whatever the entity claims to be, 
the the the, the symptoms of it um, are, are very similar across the board. So so yes, um, it was just in recent months I saw, and I think as well I'd like to say at the very outset, you know, we're not attacking or pointing the finger at anybody who has experienced this or who has initiated sex with entities. We're not here um, to, you know, judge people or get nasty at people. It's not that at all. I've been there. My mother's been there. It's just that we want to gently and lovingly warn people of the risks of this. Um, You know, to me, I guess a a metaphor is a bit like... um, it's kind of like doing a, a, a strip tease while playing with a Ouija board, for example. You know, you might expect to only attract harmless spirits, um, but oftentimes this is just not the case. And then the reality of it is it actually extremely dangerous. Yeah, uh, uh, this medium was on national TV on um, a very well-known morning TV programme here in the UK, so it it definitely had a huge, huge audience right across the TV. It then, of course, her story then hit most of the the tabloids across the UK, both the print versions and the online versions. And, um, you know, you might think that that, that many parents might have spoken out about this, especially because it was morning TV. Um, perhaps concerned that their teenagers would be intrigued by this and maybe start experimenting with it. Um, but I think it's just a sign of the times that practices once taboo are just becoming normalised and accepted and even promoted and very few will speak up, you know, perhaps um, from fear of being labelled unpolitically correct or, you know, if these women want to do this, let them do it type of attitude. Um so, but I do want to emphasise we're not here to attack people who are involved in this. We're, we're, we're just want to to warn them. Um, and you know, we we also know that there's nothing new under the sun. This has always happened. There's accounts cross culturally, cross culturally, <laughs> and down throughout history where people have reported having sex with um, supernatural beings of one kind or another. So it's not new of course, but my concern just is that it's made much more mainstream now, much more seen as an acceptable uh, option for, for people um, to do that. I think it's it's going to really bring a lot of problems to people. And as we know, you know, deliverance ministries will say they're used to, to helping people who have been sexually abused, maybe in cults or, or occult or SRA abuse, where sometimes entities are involved as well, uh, raping the the victim. So it's it's not anything new, um, but my concern is it is just getting pretty bad um, with the exposure it's it's been having. So so this lady, um, she it was on the 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 this morning show, and um, she, she spoke about her. I think she said she'd had about 20 ghost lovers over the years. Wow. Um, it was it was picked up and, and covered in, in a lot of different magazines as well. Um, and so you're talking about 20 million people in the UK potentially could have saw this. And um, she calls herself a spiritual guidance counsellor. Uh, and and she, she said she fell in love with, with this uh, latest ghost lover, um, and sadly, he, he, he dumped her after having sex with her a few times, so she was pretty broken-hearted about this. Um, and one of the things she said, well, you know, she said she will never go back to men. This this is her choice now. She, she doesn't want relationships with alive men anymore. She wants to continue having relationships with these so-called ghosts. Um, and so, of course, that raises a, a that brings a new option, as it were, to society, um, which I think is quite dangerous to to highlight it in that way because I believe many people will try it. Um, she, I think the red one of the red flags I think to people who might be thinking this is a genuine genuine ghosts one of the there's several red flags I'd like to raise. 
she she does say, and you'll notice that anyone who reports on this, whether they've had sex with an alleged ghost or an alleged alien or whatever, they tend to say that, that the sexual experience was such that it was absolutely amazing, absolutely wonderful, like no other sexual encounter they've ever had. Um, and to me, that would raise a red flag because you think they would question, why would this be? Why would, once somebody's dead and come back to you as a ghost, why would they suddenly be such uh, having such an amazing sexual experience with you? To me, it implies this really as a supernatural being that has supernatural powers that is able to do that. Um, I just feel that that's, that's quite a, a red flag. Plus, also... She and many others like her have reported from this type of experience that very often they can't even see the face of the so-called ghost or alien. Uh, They just feel the the, the weight of the body and so on. Now, uh, to me, that um, is a dangerous thing. That's almost like having sex blindfold with some stranger you've never met before. How do you know that that, that this so-called ghost or alien is somebody you would want to have relations with if you can't even see them? Does that not show you that they very well may be masquerading as something that they're really not? Um, so again, I, I just think that's that's another uh, red flag. That is interesting that they would say that, you know, they wouldn't do that with a man, a, a, a physical man, yet they would basically let all their mm-hmm. guard down for this supernatural mm-hmm. paranormal experience. Uh, you want me to play the clip mm-hmm. real quick of her in her own words on how she did this? Uh, I won't, it won't tell the details. Yeah, and, but, and qu- mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely, that, that would be helpful. Yeah, then people will know the context. This is on this morning sure. show in the UK that Laura was talking about, and here's her in her own words. Hopefully this comes through. Let's see here. Most yeah, powerful. Um, even when it came up behind you and you could feel its breath on your neck, yeah. that still didn't freak you out? Not at all, no. <laughs> so then you decided that you would take it to the next level and you dressed in a very sexy negligee yeah. and Can't you went do. into the spare bedroom and, uh, and uh, turned the lights off and waited. I did, yes. And what and happened? What happened? Um, I waited and waited for a while and then I got a little bit worried. I thought maybe I'd scared it off by being too keen. Oh, okay. And then sort of just as I'd given up hope and was starting to fall asleep, it came to me. And, and what happened? Um, it, I don't know what I can say on well, TV. Well, you just had sex. <laughs> Wait, you, you, had, just, you had sex? Yeah, I had sex with the so, ghost. With the ghost? Yeah. Yes. But you can't wrap your arms Isn't around that the ghost. Isn't that amazing? No. So how, what, how, physically, how does, um, how, how does the sex bit happen? I'll just happen? play this part. You, you can still feel it. Like, it felt, it was kind of, oh, it's difficult to explain. Like a weight? It's kind of a weight, but at the same time weightless. And like a physical, there's the breath and stroking. And She was seduced, basically. Mm-hmm. and allowed this entity. Now, you said that she is a medium? Well, I would say she's a medium because she's a woman who says that, that you know, she she does sense and, and hear and see spirits, oh, okay, in that ghosts, sense. And, and she classes she classes herself as a spiritual counsellor, um, and people do um, consult her with their spiritual um, questions, ah. experiences. So notice mm-hmm. that where, you know, she first felt the presence and uh, was kind of egging this uh, enti- this apparition on and bringing him in. I can't say apparition because I think apparition is more visible. And she says she claimed she didn't see this entity. It just came to her and mm-hmm. she felt it, as she said. It's not that mm-hmm. it embraced her or anything, but he she felt his presence and uh, the 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 force mm-hmm. of him on her, and at the same time weightless. Uh, and mm-hmm. then later on, she tells that her husband or her boyfriend at the time came home and said, "Who's the man that's in your house?" and saw him. So, like one person mm-hmm. can see, and she's having sex and not even being able to see this entity. So to her, it wasn't an apparition, but still a presence of some kind in which she allowed to summon, uh, to come in and uh, likely invoked him, especially wearing uh, seductive things purposely 
to see if she can gather his mm-hmm. inf- his uh, attention, his attractiveness to her, which is a way of summoning. But like you said, now she's a spiritual guru for others. Now it's transported into something further in which now she's given counsel in this, making her a spiritist. Well, she was already a, a, a spiritual guidance counselor. Actually, she she had already been oh, she uh, was advising first. people on. Oh, yeah, okay. she she was she was first. Oh. Um, but then she's had about twenty ghost lovers in about the last ten years. I don't know how long she's been a spiritual counselor. But yeah, and it just strikes me, you know, how can you? And there's even been mediums, ghost hunters. You know, psychics and New Agers comment on on this program too. Uh, well, rather online on, on the online discussion after it. Uh, many of them saying they're horrified at this because even they wouldn't um, have sex with a ghost, even though they are a medium, and they wouldn't recommend doing it because sometimes the ghosts lie to you. Sometimes spirits will lie about their identity. Okay, they don't call them demons. They do think they're ghosts, but you know they will say you could have an evil ghost that's lying to you. So, as you say, a woman wouldn't want to have sex with a man who's lying about his identity. Why do it with uh, a supernatural being? Wow. Now, um, yeah, yeah. This this is a a, a phenomenon. What you know? Can you uh, you mentioned spectrophilia? And uh, I know you associate sure. it with incubus and succubus. Uh, you want to define that and mm-hmm. tell us what the phenomenon is is about? Yeah, definitely. Um, and just before I do, um, you know, very shortly after this, another uh, story came out in the media. Again, a woman, this time in Wales. And again, this, this, this was across uh, the UK media, tabloids and so on. She was a spiritualist, and she claims she's been having sex with uh, the ghost of a 19th century man that she saw in a painting while living in a remote Welsh cottage. Her name was Shian, and um, yeah, she she said that she d- doubts if she'll ever have sex with a a, a living man again uh, wow. because of this, and she fell in love with this so-called ghost too. Um, and um, yeah I just think you know it's so so dangerous because think about people who have, per- have perhaps had a relationship with a man that's gone wrong and then the man maybe abuses them, hits them uh, stalks them and so on if you're in a relationship like that with a so called ghost or alien uh, they're going to turn up in your house whenever they want to rape you and so on, You you can't lock the doors, you can't get a court order out on them you have no protection you can't ban a ghost (laughs) from your house if he feels like coming back for for more um so to me that's that's quite a a red flag there Uh, and of course under the the comments from the the first show you mentioned and also this welsh lady you've got comments from experts like psychotherapists and so on and, and 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 they will say well you know, this is just what's known as sleep paralysis. It's not really a ghost. Um, It's just a a type of hallucination that happens when you're half asleep. Um, But I found also an interesting comment from a parapsychologist and ghost hunter. He believes it is definitely ghosts. um, And he actually wrote a book about this ghost sex, the violation. He titled it and he said... No one knows what motivates ghosts to have sex with the living. Are we lab rats to them? Is there some kind of battle for our souls? Are these ghosts demons trying to break us? Who knows? Now this guy's not a Christian, he's a ghost hunter, but even he sees this as being a violation um, and something really quite dangerous. Um and I think as well today, today you know, in society with promiscuity rising and, and so many sexual variations occurring in society, and it's not a taboo any longer, that this type of thing is just going to rise. 
even though it's always been there, I believe it will be less taboo now. And I'm thinking, you know, how long will it be before we have TV dramas, TV shows where you'll have, for example, Most Haunted meets Sex in the City? You know, where you've got this combination of, of um, sex with entities um, along with uh, with the occult and sex really just merging and just being dramo- uh, promoted. Um, you know, back in the 80s, there was a film Ghost with Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore. Oh, and yeah. that was really shocking when, really shocked a lot of people when the so-called ghost came back and made sexual overtures to his his widow uh, you know it's, it's nothing new under the sun um but i think it is it is getting worse uh, and just before i go into the definitions there was also very recently again in the uk uh, a woman who had been having sex with this so-called ghost for some time and, and really was in love with this so-called ghost and they decided to get married. Oh, wow. They had a proper a proper wedding. She had a proper wedding dress, the flowers, the guests, all of that. And, of course, they had a psychic medium who did the ceremony and was able to communicate, as it were, with this ghost, um, you know, so that he would say, yes, I do marry oh, such my. and such. Oh, no. um, wow. Yeah, and so, of course, that would seem like evidence for it and she he apparently was the ghost of a pirate and of course he dressed like Johnny Depp um out of the pirate pirates of the Caribbean he this, this was a so called like... ghost yeah. and she the woman um she now does you know she's an impersonator she now goes to parties and events where she dresses just like Johnny Depp um so uh, yeah, they 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 were married. They had a bit of a ceremony on the beach, wow. and so on. So again, you know, th- there's another equation for society. It's not just you can marry a man, you can marry a woman, it, it, you can marry a ghost now, um, as well. So, and well, and that really got round the media very quickly too. I even saw, uh, and this was. Um, you know, in the UK, and yet I've even saw it picked up by a tabloid in New Zealand. So it really got picked up very quickly. Um, it adds to the sure, letters. Uh, it adds to the letters now. We have LGBT and now S spectrophilia allowed in the in the context of different species to gather together. Oh my! Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and as I say, some people will say that's just uh, sleep paralysis, blah, blah. But obviously we know that sleep paralysis itself is demonic, um, which which we'll go on to shortly. But, but yeah, if I could give a few definitions, you know, um, basically spectrophilia is defined as it is... Uh, it can be just a fascination that some people have, a fascination with imagining having sex with ghosts or vampires or um, aliens or other entities or werewolves or whatever. And, of course, Hollywood feeds that with, with the romantic films it brings out where a human will have sex with another type of entity. Um wow. It, it's almost so like necrophilia. Label, it could, yeah, it's almost like necrophilia, but it's not with a physical dead body. It's with a spirit, dead spirit, right? Something like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I think that the type of vampire movies do uh, tend to feed the imagination with that. Um, so, so at a basic level, it's a fascination. It, it, it's a, a fetish, if you like. But then, of course, at, at the more solid level, it is actual relationships with these beings and actual um, sex with them and you know as I said celebrities are promoting it now as it were by sharing their experiences and and, you know so folks might say well is this a new thing and no it's not you know um, if we look at history down the ages and different you know just even myths and and folklore obviously you have things like um, sirens and nymphs 
we remember from, for example, Greek mythology, there would be these uh, beautiful beings like um, mermaids, really, that would lure sailors to their death um, by, by being seductive to them. Uh, you have, in, in Latin mythology too, and you have, for example, underworld nymphs, mountain nymphs, water goddesses, and so on. You know, beings that were almost like fairies, but but would be uh, sexually promiscuous towards towards men, and so on. And, and so it, it's not it's not something new. And I think it, it's just a, a rehash of that, um, except today we might hear it more often as being, rather than a nymph or a siren, it's an actual ghost now, or it's an actual alien or, or reptilian or, or whatever that is um, having sex with humans. Um, and again, it's linked in with the, the, the incubus and, and succubus, which, of course, we know even from you know medieval folklore, this was described as, a, as, a, as demons that would have sex with men and women. Um, you know, again, it it's, um, sounds kind of a bizarre, but, but there are th things in the Bible which, which could be even be referring to this. They might not be, but it could be. And, you know, when I myself, as I said, I was a spiritualist, my mother was a medium, and we were attacked by so-called ghosts and entities. And um, I remember that when I had left spiritualism because of all of this and my mother too I had actually become a Christian by now but I didn't yet I hadn't yet met a deliverance minister I hadn't yet had exorcism so the entities were still there even though I was still a Christian um once I had the deliverance that all stopped but before I got the exorcism um I remember being really quite terrified when this was still happening to me and you know, I was praying one day and praying uh, to, to Jesus and, and asking for, for help for this. And I was quite astonished because he led me to Psalm 91 verse 5. And it says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Now, it goes on in that verse to talk about your foot, which really amazed me because what would happen to me was my foot would get grabbed. I would get pulled out the bed. And it really looked to me as if this verse was saying, God telling me, this is going to stop, stop. You won't no longer be getting attacked in the night and your foot getting grabbed. So I just thought that was amazing that he gave me that verse. Um, Proverbs 3, 24 to 26. Sorry, it is the verse that mentions your, your foot. Um, and I know it might not actually mean that, but to me, that's what it meant. And it felt like a promise from God I would be set free. From, from these attacks, which of course did happen once I got a uh, deliverance. Wow. Um, um, yeah. So the, the uh, for you it wasn't a physical, I mean it was physical. Um, now they can, they can literally touch uh -huh. people physically, right? And you feel it. Yeah, it, it was literally physical um literally felt it now, again folks might say well i still think that's just a hallucination that's nonsense or it's just so-called sleep paralysis there's a perfectly medical explanation for it um but you can't really say that when there is actual proof of, of physical um that you have been touched physically or sometimes when you've literally been attacked or scratched or, or bitten, you know, I've been uh, sleeping, my husband's been sleeping, when the, the, the usual phenomena would happen and then we would waken up and find, you know, like a bite mark away down at your ankle or something, you know, and we know it wasn't either of us doing that to each other. So the, the phenomena um, does have evidence and of course, people in the exorcism deliverance ministry can uh, can testify to that. When sometimes they're even casting a demon out a person, and bite marks just appear on the person's body with no one else in the room. You know, it, it's not just um, a hallucination. 
Um, and again, there may be folks listening who say, well, I just don't believe they can manifest in such a physical way. So, you know, there's a friend of mine, Dana. She's an ex-paranormal investigator. She was involved in ghost hunting, um, paranormal investigations and so on. And there were times where she and her husband um, were even bitten by so-called you know, entities, whether they thought it was ghosts at the time or whatever. That's what actually got her out of that. And she came to Jesus because of it. So, you know, p- people in the paranormal community, that, that's not strange to them to, to hear of so-called poltergeists being very physical, uh, throwing objects or attacking a person. But I, I realise some Christians listening might think, I still don't think these uh, demons can be physical. Where is the proof of that? And, you know, I would say, well, for example, if, if you look at certain scriptures, look at Genesis thirty-two twenty-two, when Jacob literally wrestled with an angel and it left him with a limp. That was obviously physical. You have Acts twelve six where Peter got gently struck by an angel. That was physical. So if an angel of God can make itself appear and take physical form and touch a person tangibly or move objects, so can a fallen angel. Um, Mark nine twenty one, where um, the the man said his his child was harassed by a spirit, and the spirit often threw the child into the fire or into the water. So again, it sounds like a poltergeist type phenomena, which we call a demon. Uh, they can be physically felt. Uh, they can move objects. They can hurt people. So of course, they can also have sex with people. Um, it, it's it's not just something that's a, a, a type of hallucination. Wow. And of course, there's the you know you had said you had said to me offline that you had thoughts about that regarding. Um, Genesis 6. In Genesis, it talks about um, an account with the, it calls it the giants in the earth in those days. And after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bear children to them, uh, the, the, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. The interesting thing is uh, there's a lot of controversy over whether the giants were actually giant men saying the sons of God were those that were of Seth, the Seth line, uh, the, the I guess that would be the Enoch line, the line of the good godly men, and that they came away from where they were supposed to be into having daughter, uh, uh, habitating with the daughters of men. But the word that's used doesn't refer to men. It's, it's uh, it Nephilim, mighty ones, which are more like tyrants, not those that would be considered the sons of God. So it's led many to believe that this is actually fallen angel entities in which came down and into the daughters of men because it stipulates between sons of God, which angels are called, and daughters of men, physical women. So therefore they bear children with them, and it says that these were the giants. And uh, this is one of the accounts. And just to boot, we have a story, the account in Jude, in which it says there are certain men crept in unawares, and it talks about turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. But then it talks about angels, and down below, uh, Jude 6, it says, angels which kept not their first estate, so this is definitely messengers or angels, but left their own habitation, reserved in everlasting change uh, until darkness, until the uh, judgment of the great day. And it says, giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh, set forth for an example. So it sounds like there were angelic beings that were falling from their estate. And this uh, gives us indication that this has had been happening in biblical times. 
and in uh, in in ancient times as well. Yeah, um, personally, you know, my take on that one is I'm not convinced of uh, that Genesis six actually means, um, you know, giants as in uh, demonic creatures having having sex with people. I think tyrants can still just be mighty men and and giant and and, and stature. Um, but 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 either way, I know it's it's some people believe in that some don't but i think even regardless of that uh, controversy that y- yeah you know um demons certainly can have have sex with people or animals and of course that's that's the thing that that we're wanting to to warn folks about and, and you know um jim we were talking about the, the the few people in the media recently but You'll probably have noticed yourself that, um, especially in recent years, that celebrities and singers and actresses and actors and so on have also shared their experiences of of sex with entities. And when that really um, hits the media, again, you know, the average person, many people will, will tend to take on board what celebrities say and be intrigued by what they say and even copy um, what they say. So that's um, a bit of a concern too. Yeah, and uh, so the you're concerned over the celebrities who promote sex uh, with alleged ghosts or aliens or promote it. Uh, give us some examples. Yeah, well, you have the, there's a, an actress, Lucy Liu. She was in the Charlie's Angels uh, back in the back in the day, and, and back in 1999, she shared with US Weekly that she had sex with with entities. Um, you had the, uh, a woman that, that that was married to Ice T, and um, she spoke of it as well. She she shared that um, it, it was a perverted ghost that actually came to her, and. Um, it happened to her during the daytime, not just when she was asleep. So it's not a half sleep. It's not just sleep paralysis or hallucination in your dreams. It actually happened during the day. And um, she she was repulsed by it. And she said the ghost wouldn't take no for an answer. But once Ice T, her husband, came in the room, this perverted spirit would, uh, you know, get out out the ra- out the ro- out the road. Um. The widower of, of the late Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown, he said it, it happened to him um, once he was uh, sexually uh, approached by a, a female ghost. And um, there, there's there's a, a list of them, really. You've got Anna Nicole Smith. She, she mentioned it happened to her that um, at first she thought it was actually a boyfriend and then she realised it was actually a, a so-called ghost so she freaked out she's rather scared to to discover that um natasha blazik who strangely enough she had a role in the movie paranormal activity 2 and this happened to her as well she said it was against her will she couldn't see anybody she could just feel it um and even though it was against her will she actually began to enjoy and said it was very, very pleasurable. And that is a common uh, thing that that these people will report. Even if it started off as an unwanted advance, uh, the sex was so amazing they ended up enjoying it. Uh, Dan Aykroyd, of course, who was one of the original Ghostbusters, he said um, a a male ghost, uh, you know, a a homosexual ghost once um, approached him uh, when he was in bed. Um, you have other people that there's a, a, an actress Paz de la Huerta she was in Boardwalk Empire and she said when she visited Graceland that the ghost of Elvis came to her and had sex with her and that reminds me when I was researching a little deeply more for this uh, topic two people in the one week um, contacted friends I know saying to me that they had been seduced by the ghost of Michael Jackson 
two people in the one week. So, you know, I guess, especially if you're a Michael Jackson fan and you think his ghost is, is turning up to seduce you, some people might actually uh, be quite impressed with that, which is really sad. Uh, also, the, you know, basketball players, um, there's a hotel in Oklahoma that the visiting NBA team would, would go to quite often. But eventually the team said they didn't want to go to that hotel anymore because there was always this um, woman uh, ghost who would basically try to have sex with them all uh, and they were getting quite tired of it. You have Keisha. She has shared that she's had sex with a, a local ghost. Of course, she wrote a song about it. Um, for her album Warrior, she, the song was called Supernatural, and Katy Perry, of course, wrote a song regarding this. So did Lady Gaga. Whether they said it was sex with an actual alien being or whether it's sex with a ghost, the symptoms of this are practically identical. You know, Laura, um, I, and again, I... the the te- yeah, when I uh, was, I, I used to study ghosts uh, as a youth and uh, UFOs and, and uh, uh, abductions and such. And I even knew back then when I wasn't a believer in Jesus Christ that there was a lot of similarities with aliens and ghosts or what would be called demonic presence. And it's funny that people say they're ghosts, but if they do bad things, they're all of a sudden demons. And that's the only way they know they kind of differentiate the, the races or the, or the, or the sects of, of the, uh, of the entity, which to us, they're basically the same entity, the same, uh, from the same origins. But, um, I noticed that there's a similar surrounding environment. Uh, those that had, been in the presence of ghosts with the sulfur smell and all this other thing, and with aliens who had the same exact uh, environmental smells and sounds and sights and such, that eventually the alien mm-hmm. that was supposed to be physical can eventually vanish and can go through walls just mm-hmm. like a ghost. And then all of a sudden, doesn't need yeah. to be in the presence of the person anymore, can telepathically connect just like a mm-hmm. ghost would, and its presence would be there even though it's not there. So the this similarity mm-hmm. between mm-hmm. aliens and ghosts are quite stunning, and uh, how how they relate the same the same exact characteristics, which makes us wonder if the aliens are, are actually demons or or let's say spiritual entities, for lack of coming out and mm-hmm. <laughs> accusing them of being demons right away. I mean, we know they are, but I mean, it's for, for, sake of, for sake of the conversation, for those that still think they're just spiritual entities, the, the similarities are still there sure, with aliens sure. and people mm-hmm. having sex with aliens. It's, it's the same thing. Absolutely. And, and you know, people who, who have reported sex with aliens and so on. I had two guys who'd experienced that, I interviewed them on my radio show, and the similarities between whether it's an alien, a so-called alien or a so-called ghost, are just striking. Uh, And of course, you've got Joseph Jordan, um, his website, alienresistance.org, where he helps people being attacked by so-called aliens. And, you know, when you read their stories and when you see how they got free, again, the exact same principles uh, refer to so-called ghosts. So, yeah, it does beg the question, aren't these one and the same actual entity masquerading as so-called ghosts and masquerading as so-called aliens, which uh, we happen to believe, yes, they are. The reason why we believe they are is because the demons um, have, you know, daemon, meaning intelligent being, uh, is 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 more than just being a devil or an accuser. It's 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 an actual entity, and we believe that demons may be an offspring of fallen angels, as such. Uh, the spiritual aspects, characteristics that come out as personifications, but they become aliens. Uh, aliens. They become uh, entities and kind of interact with with humans. And the the Bible says that 
in Hebrews, I think it is, Hebrews 10.25, is that where it? No, Hebrews 9.27, man is appointed once to die and then judgment. So whereas the ghosts are said to be residual spirits or souls of the person after he's dead, that's kind of in limbo or wandering, this this uh, this opposes what the Bible says, appointed once and then judgment, that the person doesn't come back as a different entity or come back as a residual spirit. The Bible talks about this in several places, like in Deuteronomy 18 and uh, Leviticus 19 and 20 also, where it talks about familiar spirits. And these are spirits that come on mm-hmm. as an entity that you're familiar with or attaches to some uh, something that's familiarized with you. Like if you have an a, obsession with an idol, the idol can inhabit a spirit to t- be taken on the worship or the be the subject of your adoration. And that's what these demons do. They, they attract your adoration, and they'll do anything they can to intrigue you, even to become the image of a dead relative— to get your attention, because you're not going to deny your dead mm-hmm. relative. So it's an easy in, in mm-hmm. for them, especially using a photograph that's on a wall and personifying that as, as an excuse to stay and uh, have its place. But the main purpose is that it ministers to you as a angel of righteousness, but it's a demonic entity to deceive you away from the truth of the gospel and the fact that without Jesus Christ, you will perish. So these are demons in disguise. And that's why we believe that ghosts are not the entities that you think they are, but that they are demonic fallen spirits, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And as an ex-spiritualist, I can testify to that. And many ex-mediums, ex-psychics, ex-ghost hunters can testify to that, that these familiar spirits, they are bad angels, if you like, that have followed your generational line down down your ancestry. So they remember your great, great, great grandparents. They remember them very well because they followed them. And so they can impersonate them perfectly and pretend to you that, that they are them. And that they can tell you accurate details about that person's life, everything, so that you're totally convinced that that is grandma. But... The one thing is, when tested in the name of Jesus Christ to show their true identity, many, many times these um, will morph, if you like, uh, a bit like shape-shifting. They will morph from looking like dead grandma to suddenly showing you their true demonic form underneath. Uh, You know, in the last 20 years, I've had people worldwide get in touch with me to say, yes, Laura, I did that. I was a medium. Uh, I heard you saying this on radio or whatever, and I did it. I tested it in the name of Jesus Christ, and you were right. It was not ghosts I was talking to. It was demons. A few occasions people have got back and said, no, that the so-called testing the spirits didn't work. Um, But there are actually various reasons for that, one of them being if you're so desperate for this to, to remain uh, a so-called ghost, then it can be very hard to uh, challenge it because they know that you don't really want to stop doing this, that you quite enjoy being a ghost hunter and so on. And also because there's been so much occult perhaps in your ancestry, there's still curses there, there's still exorcism needed, deliverance ministry needed. And then often if you go through that, the test will work because the so-called ghosts or aliens or whatever will morph into their true form and show you that they really are uh, messengers of of Satan. Like the Bible even says, even Satan can masquerade as if he's an angel of light. These beings can morph into anything um, that that you want to see. If if you're a fan of Michael Jackson, they can easily morph into his form and pretend to be him. Uh, That's not uh, a difficult thing for them to do. What do you think is, do you think uh, the the practices of this and the exposure of this is on the rise? Um, you know, what do you think that's due to? Yeah, 
it is on the rise. You know, as we've mentioned before, there's nothing new under the sun. This has always ha- always happened. Uh, we can always find um, reports about it down the ages and, and different cultures reporting it. But I think that there, there are several reasons for, for why um, this seems to be more exposed and, and the practices of it are rising. You know, whether it's within animism, shamanism, spiritualism, whatever this has um, happened, it's not new. But I think because nowadays we have people are much more open about their sexual experiences, uh, things just aren't taboo anymore. Um, And often, I I guess we're in the age of reality TV, we're in the age of programs that, that, that like to shock the audience so the more bizarre the better I think uh, they may see see it as so you know and of course we've got so many things now that, that wasn't available years ago like this uh, new um, phenomenon now where, where, where people can have sex with robots um, so whether it's sex with a robot sex with a ghost, sex with an alien or whatever it's kind of a looking like Nowadays, anything goes, and as long as you enjoy it and you're not harming anyone, then why not? Um, so I think that the the, 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 the the sexual moral decline in society uh, will allow for this to be more exposed and the practice to rise. There are websites, lots of websites now, that actually show you how to uh, attract a ghost lover. Oh, really? Um, wow. So, of course, yeah, and of course, most of these websites are um, run by people who, you know, there may be mediums or ghost hunters, so on. So they do believe these entities are ghosts and aliens. They don't think they're demons, but but um, they are showing people how to invoke a sexual encounter with an entity. If, like the two women I mentioned earlier, um, the person is tired of human relationships, tired of uh, dating humans, and wants to try something different. Um, a, you know, a different feasible option for people today is to have sex with entities. Um, and as I said, you know, you've got the books and the films, the, the paranormal romances, r- romances with vampires and so on, uh, whatever the entity may, may be, that is making all of this more. Um, more of an option, more, more, more feasible, and um, I, I'm not surprised if if we will have Christians who have even been doing this and just you know not telling their friends, not telling obviously their pastor or anyone because they genuinely are thinking this is a ghost. There are many Christians who just don't realise what the Bible says about that and that ghosts are demons. So. I'm sure there are Christians who who, who are who are doing this um, and not even aware of what they're involved in, and I think it's also increasing in the in these days, just because it is the last days, and you know the truth is being blurred more and more. Deceptions are are, are going to rise, and it's like this normalising of um, the occult and sex merging together I do think it will even creep into the church Um, for those who haven't experienced it before even Christians in the church I think it will seem like an option to some of them Um, you know we're just seeing so many boundaries blurring nowadays we we have people talking of um, certain states in America certain countries who have or are thinking of um, decriminalising paedophilia decriminalising bestiality and so on it's just the, 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 the norms of society are collapsing and I think this kind of stuff is only going to increase uh, you know and, and part of the great falling away, part of the deception and as you said you know what people might say well why on earth is this, what's the point of it all why are these demons doing this because their ultimate aim is to do anything to attract you away from coming to faith in Jesus Christ and following Jesus Christ and being saved and your eternal destiny in heaven being 
secured because, as you said, Jim, you know, a demon can take on the form of a ghost, an alien, a goddess, a, a, a false god, um, any kind of entity that, that, that people believe in. The demon can take that form and feed that person um, false religion, false gods, lies basically about the afterlife, lies about eternity because they want people to go to hell. They want people to follow um, their deceptive teachings and miss out on on knowing Jesus Christ as their saviour. Yeah, and it's enticing the the pleasures of the flesh, like like you mentioned about the falling away, the end times and such, and and these days, uh, you know, as the scriptures said, it would get more wicked again as it did before the flood. And even Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, which were they were eating, drinking, and being merry, and having promiscuity and and, uh, practicing drunkenness and everything, that these are part of the enticements Mm -hmm. of the pleasures of the flesh. And, you know, the devil knows how to Mm -hmm. get to the sensory uh, sensors of our of our body and to entice us with those pleasures and make it seem like it's you know bypass our morality of it and and make us think that this is mm-hmm. pleasurable and and fun and permissible and it's actually disregarding mm-hmm. god people are entrapped by it there are people that don't know that this is displeasing god the scriptures reveal that when they come to the scriptures but even christians sh- should know that who who don't uh, if they read the scriptures, realize that the temptation in the garden was basically to do that test our sensory, uh, you know, triggers and to entice us with the pride of life and the lust of the flesh and the eyes. That this is a personification of pleasuring the flesh and satisfying the body, disregarding the things of God. So it's actually opposing God. It's denying God by doing these things. And some people even think, you know, even some psychics, as you know, Laura, is that they they perceive that they're Christian or they, they sit, make a statement that they're Christian, but they're not Christ's if they don't do his commandments, if they don't regard what he says. Mm-hmm. But they think that they have a mm-hmm. higher knowledge of him, which is basically putting putting them out of the box. That It's not a higher knowledge of them, uh, of him. It's an enlightenment of its own, of its own self-deity and its own divinity in which bypasses the scriptures and the wisdom of God. So therefore, it's displeasing to him. It's disregarding God, and, and, and many people don't realize it or care at the moment. So I think that's part of why mm-hmm. this is happening today. And you know many, you mm-hmm. know of deliverance ministers and um, ex ex occultists that are addressing this, right? Yeah, yeah. And just before I, I mention some of their experiences, you know, it's not new. We, we look in the Bible, you look at the Old Testament. In ancient times, uh, people were involved in occult witchcraft type ceremonies where things would get very dark very evil they would even um, kill their own children sacrifice their own children have sex with 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 their own children incest and so on and we know cultures we do know um, from archaeology uh, and so on there, there, uh, there have always been cultures who have done this at the request of their so-called gods now isn't that interesting that all down throughout history, various uh, entities, various gods have requested their people do this, you know, uh, sacrifice people, have sex with with children and so on. The similarities um, are just so, so obvious that really it just does show you that these are demons that are uh, messengers of Satan. It's just, the parallels are just too astounding to uh, claim that it's just mere coincidence. Um, but but you know, before I go on to sharing what what some other folks have said, it sounds all terribly gloom and doom. Um, but I have to say, on the plus side, what's also happening along alongside this is that more people are discovering they can be freed by Jesus Christ. More people are turning to websites because they're being attacked by so-called ghosts, so-called aliens, and they're finding um, 
ministers are finding Christians online who show them how to receive Jesus into their life, how to get the demons cast out of them, and how to be free from such attacks. So although you could argue Satan's really overplaying his hand these days, he's really uh, jacking up all this demonic stuff. Well, yeah, he is, but it also means that many people actually end up finding Jesus because they've been uh, sucked into these things and affecting affected by these things. So rather than being dismayed, we can see this is actually a massive opportunity to share the truth about Jesus Christ that people who maybe would not have believed in Jesus before, but after they start getting attacked by demons, they start looking for answers and many people actually come to Jesus through such phenomena. So so that is a, a, a big plus point. Hopefully we don't have to wait till they get uh, attacked, you know, before they... Well, exactly, I know, I know, but, you know, many people do. And um, so, as I say, Satan might be trying to overplay his hand, but at the end of the day, Jesus is still the victor, and he will draw as many people to him as possible. Um, yeah, you know, over the years, as I say, I've now been a Christian 20-plus years. Even when I was still a spiritualist, I was very aware of this type of attack and phenomena um but since then as a christian I've, I've always been aware of it too and i've heard other people's experiences of it and deliverance ministers um experiences of helping people get free from it and, and oftentimes you know it can be initiated by a person who wants to contact so-called ghosts or aliens but sometimes the person has done nothing uh, that they know of to open the door to such phenomena. Sometimes the person, it's just been, they've maybe been in a, a hotel where it's happened or a, a house where it's happened because that property had a resident demon. Or sometimes the person may have, may not have done anything themselves, but their parents or grandparents were maybe involved in so-called ghosts and so on. And they've inherited that curse, just as the Bible talks about the generational curses that pass down the generations. And that is a warning to people. Maybe, you know, you're involved in talking to so-called ghosts or aliens. You're maybe having sex with them and you think, well, you know, it's, I can put up with it. You know, if I get attacked, whatever, I'll deal with it. But it's not just going to affect you. It can potentially affect your family, affect your friends, anybody who comes into contact with you. And definitely your children and your grandchildren because they will inherit that uh, spiritual door that you have opened that's allowed that curse to happen. They will inherit that. So even if you do get free from it, it's not to say um, if you have children or grandchildren in the future, they won't um, be attacked in the same way. Um, but, but yeah, the, you know, the deliverance ministers will say another way this can happen to people is often find people who practice astral projection, astral travel, will many times they will talk about beautiful experiences they have, but also many times they will talk about horrible experiences they have. And, and one of the things is being attacked by demons um, or, or being raped by demons. So astral projection is another door that can open you to this type of attack. Um, you know, and sometimes people who have been through this, it, it it even becomes addictive to the point where the person, on the one hand, um, they're, they're frightened. They don't want to uh, to continue with this activity, but they can't just tell the entity to stop coming. Um, one, because it won't it won't stop coming. <laughs> You've opened the door to it and it'll just keep on arriving if it wants to. But two, the person can be, on the one hand, horrified and on the other hand, become addicted to it because of this uh, sexual pleasure that it brings. So when the deliverance minister is ministering to that person, not only are they dealing with the, the demon, but they're dealing with helping the person obviously break free from that addiction um, as well. So, you know, th there, is, there is a lot of issues that, that can arise through this. And, and again, as I mentioned earlier, people will say not only might they might see entities or, or hear the entity, they might see just a shadow person in the room coming towards them, they might not see anything 
but one of the um, telltale signs is when claw marks or bite marks are evident on a person's body when they obviously hadn't just um, self-harmed, for example. So, you know, and some folks might say, well, this is all kind of foolish. Why would people even attract having sex with entities anyway? But as I said, sometimes they've not attracted it. It's just happened to them. Um, or, or isn't it foolish that, that people will want to do it, that there are websites today actually showing you how to um, attract a, a, a sexual encounter? Well, we could say, yes, okay, you could say it's foolish. But remember, these people don't know that these are actually demons. These people genuinely think it's real ghosts, it's real aliens and so on. So, you know, there's no point in us laughing at that and thinking how foolish. No, we know the truth. We, it's actually our responsibility to share the truth and, and, and to let folks see that this is actually demons. We can't expect people to know if they haven't been told. Um, pastors, leaders in the church and so on, this is a subject that's that's uh, rarely ever mentioned. I don't remember it being mentioned in a church, and I've been a Christian over 20 years. It's just not something they'll talk about. So if they're not even teaching their own flock, uh, new Christians in the church might not even have heard of this, or mature Christians might not even have heard of this. Uh, what do you expect them to do when, when confronted by it? You know, it is our responsibility to, to share uh, uh, the truth about it. Um, and, you know, there, there's a friend of mine, Vince McCann. He has an excellent website, spotlightministries.org.uk. And he uh, did a Christian review of a book titled The Siren Call of Hungry Ghosts by Fisher. Now, Fisher was actually a medium, but he, like like many mediums, like many testimonies I've heard of, and we've all heard of, he actually began to be attacked by his so-called spirit guides, so-called um, dead relatives, and so on. Same thing that happened to me and my mother. He you know, it came to the conclusion that, that these were not actual ghosts after all. They were some kind of an entity. He didn't realise they were demons. He didn't um, follow right through and, and discover what the Bible said about it. But um, he stayed in, in the New Age and tried to just uh, put up with this. But eventually it got so bad that he committed suicide. And again, that is very common. Either the person will commit suicide or attempt to commit suicide or end up in a psychiatric hospital. I hear of that on a regular basis from people worldwide who tell me that that's what they or their relative or friend has experienced. I don't know how many times someone has contacted me and said, I used to be a spiritualist, I started to get attacked by demons, etc., etc., I was suicidal, I'm just out the psychiatric hospital, etc., etc. It is so, so common um, and a great, great tragedy. So, you know, that that's, that's why we want to share with people. We're, it's not because we're pointing the finger at them and, and you know, being judgmental. We don't want people committing suicide. We don't want people being raped by demons. And above all, we want people to um, find Jesus Christ and come to know him as their saviour. So in conclusion, uh, are you working on a new book about this? Um, uh, And why don't you give us some spiritual sources for this and uh, explain purity, if you will. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I am working on a book at the moment that this will be one of the topics in the book, but it, it will also cover my own testimony, ex, ex-spiritualist. The fact my mother was raped by demons and committed suicide. It has other testimonies in it by, for example, my friend Dana. She's an ex-ghost hunter, paranormal investigator. A, a range of, of similar testimonies and um Mark Hunneman, he is is writing a chapter exposing the whole ghost 
phenomena. He goes into the, the biblical detail and really scholarly detail of debunking all of that. So, yeah, that's the book that I'm writing on um, at, at the moment. But, but yeah, I'm really keen for folks to, if, if this is, is making sense to them and, you know, they, they, they want help, then I'll certainly uh, pray at the end for, for the person to, to, to come to, to Jesus Christ. But I would like to refer people also to a couple of websites that, that will be helpful. There's um, a website, alienresistance.org, by Joseph Jordan and Guy Malone. These two men used to be into the whole UFO alien phenomena uh, until they realized it, it was actual demons and not aliens, and they have helped thousands of people be set free from so-called alien abduction attacks. Now, the principles that you will learn on that website will help you, whether it's so-called aliens, so-called ghosts, whatever the entity is that's attacking you, it's the exact same principles to be set free uh, through Jesus Christ's help. Uh, Chris White has an excellent book and a video online, Sleep Paralysis, What It Is and How to Stop It. Again, the principles there are, are the same, um, but it's very useful and helpful information for people that, that I would uh, recommend that they look at. Um, so, you know, and, and basically if you have friends involved in this type of thing or family members, just please pray that their eyes will be opened and that these demons will reveal their true identity. Oftentimes that's, that's what's happened. People have told me they knew that their mother was praying, their friend was praying, and one day so-called dead grandma slipped up, told a lie, said something that wasn't right, and the person knew, hey, this isn't my dead grandma. So they remembered the challenge, they tested it in Jesus' name, it revealed its true identity. So do pray for people that the identities will be revealed. What else can people do to stay away from this or to turn from it? Yeah, well, it, it, it's um, very wise to go through your, your home and anything linked to any kind of occult, um, any kind of witchcraft, New Age phenomena to preferably burn it if you can. That's what they did in the, in the Bible. They uh, burned any such artifacts, any icons, any false gods, because these objects have a curse on them. Um, so it's best to, to, to burn them if you can. Get it out of your house because as long as you have such occult books or videos or objects in your home, Ouija boards and so on, tarot cards, these are like an open door to demons and they allow the demons to stay in your home. So it's like doing a spiritual uh, spring clean, if you like, to get all of that out of your home and then that certainly helps in the deliverance process. And then, of course, find a, a deliverance minister who can cast demons out of you and break those curses. Because you could become a Christian and still be attacked by these things. Uh, even with using the name of Jesus, you still get attacked. And it's simply because the demons are still there and need to be cast out. And we can see, of course, where that happens in the New Testament. Jesus and the disciples did it. We still do it today. It's still required. Demons haven't disappeared, so we still need <laughs> um, people casting out demons. I, again, a wake-up call to the church as well um, to, to really embrace this deliverance ministry and, and help people be set free. And, you know, it helps to... to not only clean out your house, but clean out your heart too, because uh, this is the controversy we have as believers. As uh, I can understand if you're an unbeliever, why things like this would attract you and mm -hmm. have a power over you. But as believers, we do have victory. He was in us is greater than he was in the world. But a lot of Christians misinterpret that as meaning that nothing can harm them. And that's so far from the truth because First of all, we have human-to-human -human mm -hmm. interaction with another human and their will to harm people. It doesn't, it doesn't save you uh, from that 
it just helps you get through it. And, uh, you know, God often allows the, the free will of others, even if they're harmful to others, uh, and, and gives you a sense of favor and protection. But there's a time when, you know, God lifts his hand up from, from situations uh, when people are willfully ignorant or, or turning from him. But however, as a believer and having the victory, you still have the fiery darts against you and you still have attacks. We do have the mechanisms. We have the weapons of warfare. Ephesians 6 talks about it. You can go through that, talking about how to raise up Mm -hmm. your spiritual armor, your faith and your salvation and such. And, you know, with the word of God as a sword, you can fight back the spiritual entities. However, if, if your heart, you don't have a pure conscious, if, if you're, bringing in stuff that you shouldn't as a believer. You know, a lot of people will say, well, we're not judged by that. Well, yes, you are. There are certain things that you allow in your life that that really displease God, and sometimes you come out of the wing of protection from God by insisting on Mm -hmm. these negative things that he can't bless you through, like if if you're uh, uh, conducting um, uh, practices of, of pornography or having idols in your life and, you know, things like that, you're putting yourself in the devil's lair and therefore making yourself Mm -hmm. open for these things. So by testing yourself and by cleaning out your Mm -hmm. own house, by getting rid of the impurities in your heart as well as around you, uh, you can have a good conscience towards God and the power is with you as you walk. There's no condemnation for those who walk in Christ, that walk in the Spirit. However, if you are walking in a way that is is against and opposing the things of God, you are putting yourself in the ring of fire, and you you need to escape that. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, is as believers, you have the power once you come to that point of realizing where you have been to turn from it and repent, change your mind, change your direction, and open arm. Uh, embrace God once again, and and He, you know, He never leaves you nor forsakes you. However, you can walk away from His provisions sometimes by, in, 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 you know, getting entrapped in these in these uh, practices that are of God. So we have to be careful as believers and such. Does that make sense? Because a lot of people will say, "I don't understand that. We're supposed to have the victory." Well, we do. But you cannot yeah. go and walk away from God and bring it in your life and expect that, you know, you, you jump off a building. Jesus was tempted on the, on the Temple Mount. If, if he had jumped down from that Temple Mount, uh, do you think that God mm-hmm. would have saved him? No, because he put himself in a situation that he should not tempt God. And if you do that, mm-hmm. you are, you're basically tempting God and walking away from his provisions. But by, uh, by coming mm-hmm. to your senses again— you know, we have the victory. Absolutely, I agree. You know, um, yes, God is forgiving um, uh, if we ask forgiveness and repent. Uh, and But he wants us to turn away from such things. Purity and, and holiness is important to God. Um, the scripture says, without holiness, no one will see God. Uh, and the scripture says, my people perish through lack of knowledge. People, you know, believers can perish. They can get themselves into trouble, serious, dangerous trouble. Um, You know, if you continue in sin deliberately, it's like the law of cause and effect, as it were. The the, the fruit of sin is is trouble in your life. It may be ill health even, maybe an early death even. Um, So... Whereas was living a, a righteous life, the the fruit of that is far more godly and far more full of blessings rather than bringing curses uh, into your life, which is a very real thing. Some Christians think they can't be cursed, but that's not true and that's not what the Bible shows. So, absolutely. And, you know, purity and holiness is important, um, whether it's as you say, something like um, pornography or whether it's uh, wanting sex with ghosts or whatever. And for Christians who this might seem an option for or they're maybe even doing this, I would say, you know, let's get back to the Bible. Let's get back to the Great Commission. And then maybe some people think, well, I think ghosts, there are some ghosts and there are some demons and 
Sometimes we're dealing with real ghosts. Sometimes it's demons masquerading as ghosts. And they may argue that that's what they believe. Well, even if you do believe that, which I don't, but even if you do believe that, in the Great Commission, Jesus told us to make disciples to um, go out and heal the sick and to go out and cast out demons. He didn't say, you know, go and have a ministry to um, helping ghosts pass over or investigating ghosts or paranormal investigations. Jesus and the disciples didn't do that. Um, there's nowhere of that. That's recorded in the Bible. If they didn't do it, why should we do it? He told us to go out there, heal the sick and cast out demons. Let's get back to the Great Commission um, instead of entertaining so-called ghosts and aliens and invest it. What's there to investigate? You, you go to a home with an EVP recorder with you know scientific equipment with uh, gadgets that will help prove that, yes, there is an entity in this home. So what? We already know there's an entity in this home. Just go and cast the demon out. We don't need proof. We don't need a ghost box. <laughs> it's a demon. Cast it out. Jesus and the disciples didn't, you know, take paraphernalia to test it or investigate it. They cast it out. End of story. Let's get back to that. And then you really know you're in God's will when you're literally doing um, what what the Great Commission commands us to do. Okay, and as as we uh, get to the end here, um, I just want to mention we are live again. We got knocked off uh, through a computer glitch of our broadcast connection, and we are live, and I will repost this in its entirety when we're finished. But uh, how about praying for the audience? Sure, I would love to. Um you know, if you're listening to this and so far you haven't believed in, in Jesus Christ and, you know, maybe you've lately been looking at historical records that actually prove he really did live and die on the cross and rise again. There is actually historical proof for that. And you're realizing, wow, he really was a real person. He really is the son of God. And this is the truth. It's the truth. I'm a truth seeker. I want this truth, I want Jesus in my life, then please say a prayer, something like this. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus Christ to live amongst us, to die on Calvary's cross for our sin, and to become the saviour to anyone who asks. So Father, I now ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart and become my saviour. Wash away all my past, all my past mistakes with your precious blood and give me a brand new start in life. Come alongside me through your Holy Spirit and help me through the rest of my life. And Lord, lead me to, to, to people, to, to deliverance ministers who can set me free from any of the things spoken of in this show. Set me free from demonic attack. And I thank you, Lord, that you love me so, so much and that you have been waiting, waiting for this day for me to come to you. I thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right. Thank you, Laura. Why don't you tell people how to connect with you and what your blog's name is and everything? Yeah, my blog is ourspiritualquest.com. It's got links to my YouTube. You can find my TV interviews, radio interviews, and a plethora of true life stories from people who once were involved in all sorts of um, other religions and spiritualities and who came to Jesus Christ. All right, Laura, I really thank you for uh, joining us. It was a pleasure, and uh, I'm glad you bring your insight to us. Well, it was lovely to be on your show again and to chat with you, Jim, and um, thank you so much. All right, and we'll be talking in the future. So... That was Laura Maxwell. 
go to her website, ourspiritualjourney.com, and check her out on the internet for several interviews and such. She's out there. So uh, that will give you some insight if you have questions about this topic. My website is jimdukeperspective.com. That's where you can find all my information and touch base with me. And uh, listen to past podcasts as well as connect with my YouTube channel and such. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week.